Before we go any further, I just want to say, um, now, the listeners, mm-hmm. we're starting now, we're starting, we're going yeah. in, we're going in. If there's one person that I'm always consistently mm-hmm. paying homage to on the radio, yeah. without or with a single, mm-hmm. is this young lady that I'm talking to right now. Aww. And it's, it's, it's not a hype thing. You know, like... It is what it is. I, I've got my favourite artists. Right. So when we're talking about Mal's, we're talking about Joe, Donald Jones. People mm-hmm. know I champion them regardless. Whether people think they're mainstream we'll or not. <laughs> Female-wise, yeah. I've always said Faith yeah. and yeah. Marsha. Oh, that's mad. <laughs> that is mad. No, it is what it is. That's mad. Those, those are my artists. That's I was talking to a friend of mine. We yeah. spent New Year's together. We did a family event. My best friend, she's been my best friend for like 26 years now, maybe more. And um, we were talking about a New Year's where we walked from Michael Sobel Centre to Victoria Station after watching Donnell Jones and Horace Brown perform in that basketball gym. This is years ago. We was like, what's the most memorable New Year's when you was a youngin? And that was it. Donnell Jones and Horace wow, Brown. Wow, crazy. I, I was like, oh, man. And it's, it, oh, it's funny you bring up me and, me and Faith. I saw her at the, I think it was the Soul Train Awards, and I really had to thank her. Because when her album came out, I was waiting for her album because she did those background vocals on Usher's first album, mm. on the interlude. I was like, who is this person? Mm. Where is she from? She wrote this. She's done backgrounds on this. All my Mary stuff. It was Mary for me all day. Yeah. Faith came out and that album, and I just had to say, you know what, without singing along to those albums, like yeah. that good R&B, that consistent R&B when everyone bought any album that come out on the chart that week we would mm. just buy it just cause and I've been singing along to her for forever so for you to put me in the same sentence start with no you, seriously it just, is what it is so like <laughs> that was the little and you know we haven't even introduced this artist properly yet <laughs> that was talking. that was just talking <laughs> and that's how it is yeah. Marsha we're in no we're, we're in the greatness of Marsha Ambrosius right now oh, and this is an exclusive interview and um, I really appreciate the time, you know. Uh, no, no I really appreciate it. So anyway, um, Marsha, the thing is, as you know, through your stages of your career, you are going to have people that are going to catch on to you at different stages. Yeah. All right? So um, what I like to do, for some of the younger listeners who are just tapping in for the first time, mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, but we only heard about her from far away. That's is it? Mad. Which, which, which is understandable. Great. Give it's them a little, little history about... Who Marsha really is. Because well, they might not understand. Go back from me performing PAs at Brixton Recreation Centre after a basketball game. <laughs> and I had a little single on WEA Records through Mickey D called Is This Real? Where I was both rapping and singing. Yeah, I started it. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't start it, but that's what tip I was on. And, you know, coming out fresh out of um, the Brits Performing Arts School, you know, I had um, big dreams of doing big things. And, you know, London... Um, suppresses those dreams or limits them and I felt as though I had something just a bit more to offer and with the deals on the table and that only tunnel vision one way avenue to go I was like no I want a bit more than that so it started at um, a phone call where I had a million songs written I signed my publishing deal already and I had a song called Fantasize and I was like "Mm, what would a poet sound like on my music like what would na- what would a narrative surrounding all the music and melodies I have what would that sound like so I knew my friend Natalie um through basketball not even through school at first it was really through basketball and then through the bits of formal arts school she was a poet and I called her and I was like I've got a song called fantasize I want to put some poetry on it she put poetry on it we performed the piece and before I knew it we get flown to America before I knew it we're performing on open mic stages with the Roots, Bilal, Common, Erica Badu, Jill Scott, Music Soul Child. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what I wanted. Yeah, this is it. And then before I knew it, three months later, I was offered a deal. I was offered a couple of solo deals and everyone was persistent on, I want the singer, I want the singer, I want the singer. What I wanted was the difference. Anyone can just be a singer. I was trying to bring something new to the table. So through fights with management and fights with record labels, Tooth and Nail ensured that that was pushed through and before I know it, Flow Tree album was out. But prior to that, I'd been writing and producing and through demos I'd done, just so happened that Michael Jackson heard one of them. 
And you don't believe it when someone tells you that Michael Jackson heard your demo and loves it and wants to perform this song, I mean, record a song called Butterflies. So I'm like, I wrote Butterflies about a dude that worked in McDonald's in Camberwell. And it's not like this is the first time I'm telling this story. When I wrote the song, I told people that story. I said, this is about, I don't even know his name. It could be Darren. I don't know. <laughs> it just sounds so like London. It's Darren, in it? It's Darren from Leroy. 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 One of them, Andre. I don't know. Yeah. It's one of them, man. And he was Chris at the time. And I said, yeah, Butterflies, it is. And before I knew it, Michael Jackson's singing it. And that's a, that, that still to me is a mad one. Like, you're sitting with me in my house now. We're looking on the wall and there's me and Michael Jackson and his engineer. And I'm like, that happened to me. And it happened because of all the persistent hard work and bigger dreams that I had prior to me getting to that point. Because if I wasn't good enough to, you know, do that, mm. it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I had to tell that man what to do for weeks, not a day. Not like, oh, this is Michael Jackson, he's going to sing your song and I'm removed. Mm. I became Quincy Jones in that thing. I had to tell him what to do, how to do it. He was welcoming of that. This is the thing. This is crazy. It's, it's not. It's <laughs> bad to say out of my mouth. I'm like, you liar. I, <laughs> say, I sound like the kid in school. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. while she's coming, she's going to say some elaborate story. She was at Prince House one time. Yeah, she's all... But that's now my life. I'm now all the lies I would have told in school. Hold on a minute, Marsha. Cool. You're composing a track, yeah? <laughs> and telling one of the greatest artists of all time, the if not greatest. the greatest yeah. artists of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tune up your voice, Lekomoya. Yeah, I was like, get your breathing right. <laughs> all right, so, la, 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 yeah, that's me. Telling them what to do. And wow. To this day, that signified and solidified what would come from that like his advice to me was if that was my beginning imagine where I'm gonna go because I'm like you don't do this at the start of your career yeah. you should end of your career <laughs> you know what I mean so I'm like okay this is the beginning let me continue now I know I can write a song for real like a real one and it was just a, a, a respect level from peers and new fans whether they're discovering me from my writing aspect through flow a tree through far away through hope she cheeks on you with a basketball player through without you with Neo now they're like this is all the same person and I've managed to not only keep it fresh and um, new throughout my career but I feel like I start again every time I do something again mm. so I'm like this is new for me I'm like oh gosh this is the next part album too I can't wait and it's only growing from where I've been but still remaining that big dreamer I just wanted something else it's like for the first album I was selfish I was like no nah, I want my album it's only me on it I'm writing it I'm producing the majority of it because I wanted to prove points and I did there's Grammy nods Grammy losses Grammy wins whether that's and that's another one winning a Grammy with Justin Timberlake for Cry Me a River mad who knew that was going to happen I didn't I just happened to be once again in Philadelphia get the call Timberland's in the studio um, he wants you to come through Timberland you know now, well, you know, it's my favourite producer. Like, it's, Timberland. It's, it's mad, it's so, mad, yeah, it's, it's mad. It's mad, mad. So I'm like, okay, um, now I have to breathe. Now I have to become one of them. Not no fan, not no, okay, let me not ask for an autograph and let me get a picture. Yeah, yeah. Instagram wasn't around there, so I wouldn't be <laughs> uploading nothing. So you barely had MySpace. Yeah, barely had MySpace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it mm. was, this is really happening to me in my life. I couldn't mm. document it the way you can now. So I'm in there, they play Cry Me River. Like, what would you do? So I did the backgrounds, did the hook did the outro and before I know it it's his biggest single to date and I'm like oh yeah that's me again again so I'm like okay how do I what do I do now I was like no I'm doing me and anyone that hears Marsha Ambrosius there's something that comes attached to that whether that whether that's an emotional song that I give to Perfection. the game or Freeway or mm. Justin Timberlake Michael Jackson it's like the complete opposite sides of the spectrum I'm just creating music now, and happily so, and you see the piano is still there, and thank my parents for getting rid of the VCR back in the day, <laughs> trading that for a piano. Yeah. Like, all right, movies, yeah, they'll come. Stay on that, and let's see what happens, and here I am. What a journey. Mad. No, what a journey. Yeah, mad. Now, you know, I, I, we've been listening to your story, and I love your story, what you just said, but Marsha, man, the voice... We we just talk, spoke about one aspect, you know. Your your writing skills are phenomenal, but the voice. Now, 
<laughs> for me personally, <laughs> I only can say for me personally, but I know a lot of guys will witness and understand what I'm saying. <laughs> your voice is like, I'm taking off his clothes. <laughs> That's what your voice is like, I'm taking off his clothes. <laughs> kind of voice you how can I say this how, how can I say this you could tell a man go and put out the, the rubbish in the bin in your song he's gonna do it, isn't it? and he'd still get turned on by taking yeah, out the like, rubbish just, yeah just all bare chest yeah all bare chest it's just these yeah. slippers yeah 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 yeah. yeah. I'll you take out the rubbish it's, it's <laughs> the gift and the curse it is it's the gift and the curse the voice it's um where did it come from I though I don't know do you know what it was years of singing along to Jodeci like I said that new Jack Swing yeah era that um that bad boy era that solidified me as a singer. Before that, I just enjoyed music. It was really Michael Jackson, Prince, Stevie, no particular order. Like looking over there, I'm like, there's Stevie. Yeah, right I see it right so there. So it's it's those three. They're my holy trinity of music. Always will be Stevie, Mike, Prince, in in no order. But when I heard Jodeci and Mary J. Blige and and Christopher Williams, Horace oh, Brown, like that man. Uptown era. <clears throat> It was too much to take in at one time. I was like, what's happening? And I just really got involved in listening to the production element and the music element and the harmonies and the arrangements. And I would become the fifth member of Jodeci no matter what, to find another <laughs> harmony that they didn't do. And you're laughing, but I'm so <laughs> serious about you're me. You're serious about Martin, it. You're serious. We used to go down to, I don't know, where was we at? It was, um, whether that was SW1 Club, Hanover Grand. Like We would go in squads. We would be there as the female Jodeci wow. <laughs> like it's what we wanted to be it's who we wanted to be and um years later I'm looking back at it now and it's the respect that I'm getting from the same people that I gave respect to so I'm just like oh this this worked out for me whether that's 112 whether that was total I'm seeing these people now and I'm like you really inspired me mm. like I sang along to all that music for a reason and here I am with this voice that I shape-shifted into what I thought that was. Mm. So it's not like I, you know, everyone's like, oh, I grew up in the church, I started singing in the church. And like, my story is, I went to St. John the Divine, and our church didn't sing like that for real. <laughs> we sang, oh, Lamb of God, the yeah. straight way. And <laughs> there, were, there, were no, there was no room for, you know, the soulful element. I just kind of found my element through all the music that I liked, whether I was singing along to the saxophone solo solo in the jazz record or Devon A solo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was the same thing. I just tried to do this thing with my voice that, I don't know, it just happens. It just happens. And it happens because of all of the music that I listen to. Wow, man. If you're just logging on right now, you're catching a very exclusive interview right here with the great, this one herself, oh, yeah. Marsha. She's in the building. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you, no, man, it's such a pleasure. So, I mean, one of the most... I would say, until you see the video, you might not understand what this, this song is actually about. But it was quite a touching song, The Far Away. Now, and, I, and I know many times you've been spoken about, you, you speak about this particular track in interviews. Yeah. But um, for, the, you know, for the London listeners listening right now, that, break down that song for me, Marsha. And like, how, how important was it to you when you was writing that song? For me, at the time in writing the song was myself, um, Just Blaze and Sterling Sims in the studio. And at the time... A friend of mine had suffered a loss in his family. Um, I'd experienced someone that had attempted suicide and I lost my friend because of that. And it was all these emotions that came into the studio and that piece, the piano that starts the song was the original track. There was no beat to it, it was just the piano. So I started writing the verse. It was like, so sad to see you go so soon. Like it's it's that urgency of missing someone immediately it was something that was unexpected and in creating the video for it I didn't want to do something completely obvious you know have it be a a relationship where you know I'm missing my boyfriend I'm looking out the window in the rain and I'm yeah. sad and that's that's a regular video anyone's done that and I felt my position in music I can do something important I can say something important and we can show things that are important and at the time that was a hot topic and everyone was kind of, it, it was kind of dismissed in the news. It came and went. I was like, this is really 
happening to people. Mm-hmm. It's not just more than people that I know. It's, it, it's, it's fans of mine. It's people that will hit me up on Twitter. They will hit me up on Facebook and say, this is my story. Thank you for allowing me to live through your music. And I'm like, now I have a direct connect to my fans. You know, mm-hmm. before we didn't talk to each other, yeah, it was true. velvet rope. I'm here, big security guard, yep. and that's it. But I've never been that type of person, let mm-hmm. alone artist. Like anyone to tell you, you see me in the streets, I'm, I'm hugging you. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> like, how you doing, Bridget? Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's go yeah. Let's go Primark. Yeah. Go shopping yeah. real quick. And that's how I approach my music. It's for the people. And Far Away was definitely one of those moments. Even with the, the new single now with, with Neo, it was the same thing. It's like, why don't we tell stories anymore? Mm. Let alone our painful ones. Like everyone wants to show or glamorize how much money we have and all this other stuff that's a given, but... Well, that's the point I wanted to lead on to, because it's funny you should say that. Do you find it sometimes a bit hard as an artist? Do you think to yourself, well, there's such an easy route to go down and maybe just talk about the everyday things just mm-hmm. to get the attention? Do you yeah. say to yourself, you know what? I actually want to tell a story and my, my music to be more meaningful. Um, I just do it. It's not even something that I'll find difficult or hard or a struggle, because if I was going that route, it would be a battle. I don't see it as a battle. I'm like, I'm doing this. Take it or leave it. And then just take it from there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. Now, forwarding on. Mm-hmm. Um, Production-wise, you ever been involved in a production? So you've done the writing. Yeah, we know you've got a golden production. voice. Production. Production. Yeah. What involvements have you had in production? People that um, outside of your own projects as well. Outside of me, with, with Alicia Keys. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of vocal production, whether that was Jamie Foxx, Freaking Me, Mario. Um, it was a bunch of stuff. Anything that I've been involved in musically, I'm hands-on with it. Right. So it's shaping what the song is going to be, whether that's me on the keys, whether that's me controlling someone's voice in the studio. I'm really... I make the song um, as emotional as it's supposed to be. And I kind of take people out of their comfort zone. Mm. Like, if you have to cry, go on then, you know. And I've done that to someone. I didn't mean to do it. I actually felt really, really bad. It was bad. But I won't name any names. I put them out there. (laughs) But it's what you have to do. The music Mm. is real. It's not contrived. Like, there are so many ways to make music now like that hands on you can open your laptop and make a beat you can press mm-hmm. one button the whole thing is a whole beat mm-hmm. like it wasn't back, it wasn't like that back in the day you have one tape one drummer one bass player one lead guitarist piano a couple of strings and everyone had to be a musician mm-hmm. not a producer not a beat maker this is i think well not even i think this is something that i've implemented from day one whether that was is this real and the break beats, hip hop beats I was using from there and adding layers and all of that other stuff to Floetic, to to getting late through to Say Yes, through to any songs that I've written and produced, those would be the type, that's the type of music I've always wanted to make. And I've still done that to this day, just bring out the emotion. And it's all about the emotion. It's like when I sing or when I write something, you feel it. No, most heart, definitely. It's most a definitely. Sexual song. Or yeah. It's, you know, well, that's, sensual, we're going to have to get onto that. We're going to have to get onto that because <laughs> we need to talk about that, Marsha. Now, you know, you're, you're grown. I'm grown. We can talk about we're certain grown. things. Yeah. If your kids are a certain age, yeah, put them go, to bed in go and tell them to do something right now. <laughs> <laughs> Two big people at talk. See. So, your music's very sexual. Yeah. Are you. Are you no, I can't even say that question. That's a bad question I was going to ask you. I can't even yeah. ask you that. Yeah, you no. Can. You can ask me absolutely anything. Anything, anything. It's early. This is a morning show, you know. Yeah. So I have to be careful. Good All right, morning. Then. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Does your, you being, obviously you're a sexual person. Absolutely. For that to come out into your music. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Just know, listeners, he's blushing. If you can ah! believe it, too ah! early for this. Yeah, so what gets Marsha in the mood then? What gets Marsha in the mood? What makes her feel I like, yeah? Over the years that I'm a hopeless romantic. It's mm. really the idea. That's what it is. It's the, it's the idea of it all. What's ideal? What is the ultimate fantasy? And then you get to create that. And that's how the music happens. Okay. Even with Say Yes, I didn't realise when I was writing it, it was 
forward thinking for a woman to say, you know what, nah, all you got to do is say yes. Don't deny what you feel. Let me undress you. So is a woman taking the initiative to approach what should have been the opposite exchange? You know, you used to having a man on bended knee. I'm like, nah, if I want him, I'm going to turn him in it. <laughs> So I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I was like, no, that's that's me though. That's what I do in music. Free Fellas, music like you like you're not really gonna say yes if she said, let me <laughs> let say me yes. Say. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's become commonplace. All you got to do is say yes. It's a slogan. Whether that's late nights, early mornings, it's it's things that you say every day. It's like it's getting late. Why you got beer? I hear that. <laughs> so how much of your personal experiences with relationships? are actually portrayed in your music? All of them. All of them? All of them. And I'll I'll let that go. I mean, anyone that's seen my live show, anytime I perform them, you have to relive the moments, whether that's with you, whether that's... um, You find it as easy to address the situations that you've been through in relationships? It's like free therapy for me. Go through the motions. You have to. Hmm. Okay. (laughs) All right, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling. That. <laughs> still blushing, my. I'm still, still blushing. blushing. I'm still. I've got, I've got to be really I think careful. It's a lie. I, 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 think, I don't know. Am I answering your questions subliminally? So you're you're listening to what I'm saying. Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm what taking I'm really what I can. Saying. I can. Oh, I'm hoping it's that. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Listeners, we're behaving. We're behaving. <laughs> I'm hoping it's that. They know me anyway. They know I am. I always take liberties. I always take liberties. So, there's a couple of things I want to ask you about. And I know that the listeners would definitely want to know. As you were saying, ask me anything. You don't feel no way. Not even a little bit. A lot of people, and I hear it through the grapevine, mm-hmm. I don't even know myself. Mm-hmm. What really happened to Floetry? Because we don't even know. We don't even know. We don't you, know, know. you know why? Yeah. It's, it's, it's integrity. It's a, it's a level of respect that mm. I will always give what that situation was. You know, me and that, we weren't put together by Simon Cow. Yeah. You know, it wasn't one of them American idol. So I don't know. Just We weren't put together as a group. We were friends that were completely different people that managed to find something creative that worked together. But when you become who you are in this thing, that's all that is. And if that's different people, it's different people. And I will only give that being what it is. Anyone that's ever had a friend that has come and gone, it's the same thing. Yeah, of course. Cool. Okay. And that's all that is. Yeah. You know, three albums in, Nat wanted to do her own thing. I'm a songwriter, producer on my own. It's I wrote all them songs in a time and space where I was completely open and vulnerable and moving on force forcibly it was okay let me figure this out and I you know continued on doing my thing and figured it out I think with people who ever missed what flowishry was um same here but I can still listen to them songs and go dang I wrote that song yeah dang I produced that song dang I wrote that song too even with them you know, people that say, oh, I miss Flowtree, I miss Say Yes. Like, Say Yes, of all the songs that we ever had, was the only one, like, of, well, of, of a couple ones that was just me. Like, Nat's voice wasn't even on there. She didn't even write the song. She wasn't even in the studio when we did it. Oh, wow. And it was a song that I actually wrote for Ron Isley. He didn't take it. This is the same time I did Butterfly, same time I did a song, a couple of songs with Glenn Lewis, did Bilal stuff, and... One Isley didn't take it. And I was so upset. I was like, no, but we've got a Michael Jackson song. You should take this one. And I'm like, there is only one for me. And I'm like, this is perfect. And he didn't take it. So there's this demo floating around with this song, Say Yes, that record companies are like, I want to sign that, I want to sign her. And I'm like, no, it's actually us. It's flow and then and giving them the whole package and trying to give them the the bigger picture of it all. It was, well, yeah, we'll introduce it, flow it, and there's your single, Say Yes. Like, I had to just run with it. And wow. it just became what it was. And years into it, live show with Flowicism and then Flowology being the final um, studio album, it was time for the both of us, whether who left where, whatever. It was three albums, and we'd always made that deal from the beginning. It's like, you go ahead and do you, I'll go ahead and do me. Mm. But when you're completely different people, and I stress that, completely different people, and it's not working creatively anymore then that's all that is so to everyone that misses it me too salute but i can look back play them albums still to this day and i can go on and create more 
it is what it is. I mean, at the end, I mean, I haven't seen Natalie for a hot minute. I remember the last time I interviewed you guys was with the Floic um, album, with the, um, was it Superstar? Yeah. I think, was, I think that was the last time. Yeah. I um, but I always sense then, I mean, you know, Natalie's cool and everything, but I always felt like she was a bit the harder one out of the two. This she, she, the harder one. she was like, like, but that was the balance of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Didn't, I mean, at the time, I was just yeah. really about the music. I didn't really talk. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. She was the poet. Yeah. She was the speaker. Yeah. But, you know, when you disagree with what people are speaking on your behalf, that's when it becomes yeah, conflict a struggle. Of interest. And there's mm. conflict and yeah. it's, well, all right, we can't both be yelling at the, the person who's interviewing us. So yeah. it was like, okay, let me make my choice. Take yeah. a back seat. And I was secretly song, really so trying to like go, I want to talk to my shit. Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> see, that's where you stop it. Stop it. Anyway, stop, stop it. it. No, go, 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 go. But I'm saying, even with that being said, mm. that's what happens in life. People make their choices. Whether, I remember one time I was getting attention because I'd, I'd lost a lot of weight. I lost my grandmother in um, 03 and I lost weight due to stress. And, you know, interviews don't care. Mm-hmm. They just care about, oh, you know, you song such and such as that. Yeah. Oh, girl, you look good. Da, 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 da. You lost a lot of weight. And then it turns into all eyes on me. And I've been the quiet one, the introverted yeah. one. I'm like, no, I don't want this attention. Don't talk mm-hmm. to me. And that makes the other person who's supposed to be the mouthpiece get a bit louder, get a bit more forefront and have to do what they have to do to stand out. So it was, you know, the sh- we're young. Like, yeah, we were 21, 22 when mm. we got to the States. When I think about how young I was, like, I look at my cousin now and I was like, I was you. Yeah. Oh, my God, I thought I was a big woman. Yeah. But the music, let me tell it, mistress, whether that's mistress, whether that's getting late, whether that's hey, you, couldn't tell me I wasn't a big woman. Through what have you learned about yourself now, Marsha? That I knew absolutely nothing. Mm. And I love that. Mm. Even to this day, just not knowing... I can create not knowing. Mm. And that's like I said, even when it comes to the sensual element or the sexual element, it's the idea. Like, what's your idea? I'm like, ooh, that would be great. But I don't know. <laughs> anyway, See? let's talk about there the new go. album quickly. <laughs> I'm not, yes. I'm, I'm, listen. No, no, all right, all right. Let's talk right, about, let's, I'm behaving, I'm behaving. <laughs> Trust me, I can misbehave. Um, the new album. Yes, friends. Been hearing some rumors that it's forthcoming when April, something like that. Soon, soon. Yes, yeah, it must be about that soon. What's so different about this album as opposed to the other projects? I know you're saying now that's the features. That's what you were saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anybody that we should know about? Yeah, Charlie Wilson, Mm -hmm. um, Jill Scott, Rich. Um, oh, you got Rich on there? Yeah. Oh, wicked. So wicked. I have a song called Streets of London. I'm mm. actually telling you first. <laughs> so that was really me paying um, respects to where I come from. I mean, I know I was born in Liverpool, but coming to school here and really shaping who I really became on the streets of London. Mm. You know what I mean? So when you hear it, it's uh, I, I can't wait to shoot a video for it. It's going to be a... Uh, a homecoming. I can't okay. wait for that. So myself and Charlie Wilson, we did one that uh, a good friend of mine, Eric Hudson, produced um, called Spend All My Time. I think that might be my favourite song on the album. Yeah. I say that now, but I say it about every song that ever happened now mm. without using my favourite. Oh, yeah, and then Neo, because, yeah, yeah, the singles for Neo. Mm. So, yeah, I did I did some features on this one. I think with the first one, like I said, I was selfish. Mm. It's like, no, I'm going for self. It's mine. It's my album. I've done enough features and enough collabs and enough writing on, you know, everyone else. But to get the opportunity to write for and sing with Charlie Wilson, like, it's that's amazing. one of my heroes. Mm. Like, him... Live now sounds like the same gap band that my mum was playing. Guy's amazing. Like, he's just, he's alien, I don't know. Mm. But um, yeah, there's that. Uh, Production-wise, I pretty much stuck to the script. I've been working with the same people I've built relationships with from day one, whether that's Andre Harris that I did Say Yes and Butterflies with and many other flow songs with Your Hands from the first album. Um, who else on this album? Focus. Who I did uh, Take Care and the whole Yours Truly mixtape with, um, which was Platinum in the Hood, by the way. Um, (laughs) 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 Um, Thank you, Focus. focus. And uh, who else? Uh, The Interns, The Interns, DA. You know, I'm so British. I was saying to all my friends back home, back home in America, now it's my home. I sound like Mary Poppins now. Like when I call them, they don't understand what I'm saying. And it's because I've been here too long. This is the longest vacation I've had, like one and a half weeks long for me. So yeah, who else? Who else production-wise? Yeah, Eric Hudson. Um, 
So, oh yeah, Bam, who did the single, Stacey Barth wrote that song with me. Stacey Barth, I've been hearing about that girl. Um, <coughs> so yeah, it's kind of, it's the same squad. Mm. So it's the same cohesive sound where you're playing the album from beginning to end. It's a story. It's like, if you watch Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark on TV, yeah, you're just praying that Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is going to play right after. So mm. you can just watch it back to back. Yeah. That's kind of how I want my albums to film. I want you to watch Back to the Future 1, then watch Back to the Future 2. Mm. So you listen to Late Nights and Early Mornings. That resulted in some friends and lovers. Go on, go on. If we talk about that, our next time still. (laughs) 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 We have to talk about that next time. We will. We have to do a part two. When when, when, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? Hopefully, well, the album's out. Like May, May, June. But Major. what I will do mm. if we do an interview is just go song for song. So I Oh, no, no, no. We have to do that. <clears throat> so we'll do Late Nights and Early Mornings mm-hmm. and what song on that album transpired into... We'll just go through the album. Yeah. No, that no, that would be good. Yeah, well, that would be good, definitely. So, I mean, we're going to wrap it up this morning, mm-hmm. get on some joints. I don't know. Have you got that tune at hand, your new one? Okay. I keep The one that you performed at the show <clears throat> over the um, Jeruda Damager. Oh, I'm not telling. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I did that. My fav- That's my favourite beat. DJ Premier. Yeah. The Come Clean. that loop. Come mm. Clean. Mm. So, of course, I love Sade. And my mum will put on Sade, and it'll be that song in particular that will touch my heart. And I didn't realise how much I loved it until I did the cover of it for this album. And I'm listening to the words, and I'm like, I did not understand this when I was a kid. Yeah. Now I'm a woman, I'm like... Yeah, I won't pretend that I intend to stop living. She said she would die for someone. Yeah. Like, I could really die right now. But you know what? I, I can't hate you. I've tried. I still really, really love you. But my love is stronger than pride. It's Lyrics, for me, just take the emotion up a notch. Like, of course. really listen to what she's saying. I was mm. like, I never really listened. And I'm, I will admit that to myself. I never listened. I felt it. You know, when you're a kid, you're like, I don't know why this song makes me want to cry. Or I feel like, oh, I want to hug someone. And I didn't know those emotions when I was that young. Then listening to it now, I had to, yeah, so you'll you'll get that. That, that'll be coming when, when are we going to get that exclusive because we need that you know? we need, soon, you know, I'm hungry soon. for that tune man. Shot, I watched it on YouTube I'm like damn I need this tune yeah, it's, sounds it's going sick down, so I need it. that feels sick. like London in the springtime for me. you know that you're in an elite <clears throat> category you know because there's not many artists that can make people cry you know? I'm not talking about being starstruck or that groupie yeah. cry I'm not talking about, I'm talking about when they're listening to a song Aww. there's only a few artists that can do like Mary J Blige yeah. Faith Evans. It's a couple of artists. Okay. Yeah, that you're in that category right there. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. I need it for myself. Like, live shows, they're kind of difficult. <laughs> I tend to really look into my audience and yeah. go, okay, I see that you're here for a reason. Like, I can see someone, like, the desperation in someone's face for me to sing a certain song. Like, when I do Your Hands and I realise that that song is for that person and they'll just break into tears whether wow. that was through a bad breakup a makeup whatever it was I yeah. just knew it was for them and I'm like I want to cry for them I'm like oh my god this touches you like that yeah. I actually find the song funny now because a friend of mine who out on tour and they had it well they fell asleep for what was 2.7 seconds and told me they had this elaborate dream went to the studio, I was singing this song and it was so... F- I'm like, you fe- you closed your eyes for two seconds, how did you do this? So they sang me what the song was and I put that little bit of mm. the song at the end in, in the live show. Shout out to Angie and Shanice because they had me cracking up on tour where any of these emotions that get to me, because I have to be the artist, I have mm. to be one that's standing there giving you all of this and what happens with the day when I want to cry? Mm. there's no room for that but I've built that rapport with my audience if that's what it's going to be they'll let me and it'll be okay Mm. like I think Lauren Hill was way ahead of her time when she was on just that acoustic guitar and said Mm. look this is where I'm at accept it but nah everyone was on I want this commercial version I want it to be this and you don't get to be you I feel like people like Kanye say what you want I love him Mm. because he says what he wants he's the hero when it's president don't care about black people like people in america are dying katrina happens and no one's down there to help but then everyone's slandering his name because he tells taylor swift that she don't have the best video and stands he's up keeping on it stage. real well keep it real to himself when you keep it real for you mm. but 
you're not made to publicly apologize to America yeah. if he'd have ran up on stage and that was Rihanna standing there. Mm. And that's just the difference. So yeah, yeah. it's like, what are you really going to stand for? Mm. And I've always been one of them artists. I'm going to stand for something, whether that's quietly or as boisterous and as loud as the Leo envy wants to be. Go on. I am a Leo. I might be the quietest Leo in the world. <laughs> but yeah. That's well, do you I'm know what? I'm, I'm happy from a DJ perspective that you've kept your integrity. You, you, you've kept your stance on things. You believe in yourself. And despite whether, like, the powers that be in the UK didn't believe in you. you because know, I know they there was... Did. A, I, they did. They didn't, though. They did. Well, I don't... Hold on a minute. But I still don't I hear them play your it. stuff, Marsha. Who, though? All who? of them. I'm bunning them. I don't care. They but don't... Who, they but, don't. But this is what I'm saying. When I say who, is who are they in the grand scale of things? I can't dwell on that part of it all because yeah. that wouldn't if, if I yeah, did yeah I know I know it's only I one aspect have, no but I'm saying if <clears> I did I wouldn't have left yeah I know because I knew from day one what I had didn't cater for what I'm complaining that there's no choice FM no more no choice FM mm. are you in I didn't, I didn't know there would be a world without it I remember standing outside of Red Records because I knew Jodeci would be interviewed that day. So, Mum, I bunked off school blatantly. <laughs> She's in the back somewhere laughing. Yeah. Definitely bunked off school so mm. I could run around the corner so I could see them. Mm. I remember those moments. That's when it was special. I called Choice FM 20 million times trying to win these videotapes of something because they played a snippet of Johnny Gill, Rub You the Right Way. And I knew what that intro was. So, there's me on the phone with everyone else being a fan, being an absolute radio listener but a radio station that was important to our community. Mm. We don't have that anymore. And it's I gone. get it. Because you, you know you have your XMs and people have, <laughs> no pun intended, their own choices. Yeah. And I get it. Yeah. And they just, tell, they just showed you what the choice is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No pun intended. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you want to choose. Well, trust me, right I'm here. I'm gonna be. I'll be over <clears> here. <throat> I'll be with you. No with doubt. People that yeah. genuinely support, and there's no, there's no baggage with it. Exactly. There's no. I don't have to answer to the man and have him tell me what to do yeah. to tell me that I have to play this. Because yeah. then you turn into one of them, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, what do you stand for, for real? Mm -hmm. You don't like that. You don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. We see who you are. Loud and clear. Salute. Love that. We'll <laughs> always continue to support you, regardless. We haven't. There's one. What's missing though this morning? What's missing? Breakfast. Breakfast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Marsha's gonna cook me breakfast this morning. <laughs> breakfast is missing. What's on planting? I don't egg, even know. Whatever's on the menu. Be, it's mm. gonna be toast at this point. I don't know what's in this house. <laughs> but your voice. You haven't blessed us with your voice this morning. It's too early. Oh, see. No, what do you want? <sighs> put that. Put in a request for it. I'm just. Just, just do something for me, innit? You know what I mean? See, if you want to talk, you want to tell me to go and make the breakfast, sing about it. Special uh, cake, go make the breakfast. <laughs> what is your, all right, give me a list of what you want for breakfast. Okay, I want, I like my eggs scrambled, beans, sausages, bacons, and toast. All right. So it's morning time, and I want some bacon, baby. With sausages on the side. And I like my eggs scrambled with cheese, maybe. And some beans. Do I butter it, baby? Does it feel good when you eat that breakfast, baby? Good morning. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, you were laying there in the bed, rolled over. I'm like, yeah, this is what you want for breakfast in the kitchen morning. Yeah, that was it. Jeez, that was the whole geez. video. No, we need to stop the interview now, you know. <laughs> we need to stop the interview now because we're going we're gonna to do another interview, but you lot can't hear it. You lot can't hear it. Yeah, you lot, yeah, you lot, you lot get excited with that. Yes, off the record. We're gonna have an off the record interview now. Yeah, it's called a silent interview. Oh my god! Any last things you'd like to say this morning? Any information where the new fans that haven't got your details already can get hold of you? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all Marsha Ambrosius. M A R S H A A M B R O S I U S. New albums coming out. Friends and lovers, look out for that. If you don't have it already, without you, myself and Neo, go get that. Request it on your radio station right here. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, see you soon. Coming back for a live show 
after the new album is out so everyone can come along, sing sing along too. So yeah, that's that's about it. Shout outs to the fam. Love you. Bye. It's been a pleasure, man, Marsh. You know what I mean? Safe journey back, you know. Thank you, darling. Bye-bye.